Right now at 6, residents in a rural Rock County community are on edge after two home invasions on the same street. And Sun Prairie police are working to determine what led to a teen shooting his older brother and how he got a hold of the gun in the first place. Plus, Madison residents may not like the proposed new wheel tax, but Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway says it's necessary. We're looking into where that money would go. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. Police in Rock County are asking for help from the public after a string of recent break-ins in Janesville. They say two burglaries happened on the same street this past weekend. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter joins us from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with what neighbors there are saying today. Adam? Well, no one was hurt, but things were taken from two neighboring homes in rural Rock County over the weekend. And neighbors say it was the suspect's use of force to get into both of those homes that has them worried today. There was only three trees here. I planted all these trees. Don has lived in his West Janesville home for 30 years. There's all a bunch of little trees. I cut them all down. Although he says finding it in the first place was a bit of an accident. I was driving driving down the road and I made a wrong turn. The house was for sale by owner and I bought it. His home on West Mineral Point Road has only a few neighbors and for the most part is quiet. People mostly stick to themselves and they're, you know, once in a while when they drive by they wave or if they feel like stop and talking to you, some talk to you. Other than that, it's, it's, it's what it is. But Friday night, it was anything but quiet with two burglaries on the same street in a matter of hours. Police came to the house Friday night and told me, and then yesterday I talked to the neighbor. I thought he just wanted, well, he wanted some information. Well, I was right, but I didn't believe anybody would break into a place. Luckily, no one was hurt during the burglaries, but today the Rock County Sheriff's Office is detailing the crimes in hopes of finding who was responsible. Don says the chances of two break-ins happening in his rural neighborhood. Not real busy, well, for here it is are too rare for this to be random. I don't know, I still don't know what to think. It went, well, you gotta keep everything locked up tight. I don't know if that it does any good. And just be cautious. You're gonna have to anywhere you live in anymore, I guess, today. The Rock County Sheriff's Office says they're now asking for tips in hopes of solving these two break-ins. They say anyone with any information can send it to them by calling the Rock County Sheriff's Office non-emergency number or the Janesville Area Crime Stoppers. We have links to both of those phone numbers and more on our website, channel3000.com. Adam Duxter live in Janesville. Adam, thank you. Elkhorn police are trying to identify the man who asked the little girl to get into his vehicle and help him find his lost puppy. It happened Friday about 7 p.m. when a 7-year-old girl and a 5-year-old boy were playing outside on Meadow Lane. When the girl refused to get into the car, the man drove off. Police know it was a red car, don't have any other details. Elkhorn Area High School posted about that incident on Facebook, asking parents to talk with their children about safety. A 9-year-old boy was killed this morning in Sheboygan after being struck by a garbage truck. As you can imagine, this is uh, the type of incident that um, um, is going to have some deep effects and impacts on both the, the family and the community as a whole. The boy was riding his bicycle. Police believe he was on his way to school. A 35-year-old man who was working for the city had done so for two years. He was driving the truck. State Patrol now investigating, reconstructing that crash site to see what happened. Right now, the police chief says they know the garbage truck was trying to make a right turn onto a street with a steep incline. A teenager is facing tentative charges of first-degree reckless endangering safety after a shooting in Sun Prairie. Officers responded to the Element apartment building just off Main Street around 10.30 last night. They found a 23-year-old man with a gunshot wound to his upper arm. The victim said his 16-year-old brother shot him but was not willing to provide additional information to police. The suspect was arrested hours later during a traffic stop in Fond du Lac County. If that vehicle wasn't speeding, who knows if we'd have him in custody. So it's, that, that was very fortunate that that did occur. The victim is in stable condition at the hospital. Police are still working to determine how the team got a hold of the gun. To weather now, clear tonight, but rain chances return tomorrow. Let's check your first alert forecast with meteorologist Chris Reese. Chris? Guys, we've been watching the cloud cover that's been on the increase this afternoon, and already that has moved on into town. Here's a live look from the station camera. Looking out towards the west, it's still relatively clear. You can see blue mounds off in the distance there. Temperature-wise, we're milder as well. 66 
6 right now with those winds coming out of the south and southeast at about 6 miles per hour. Temperatures have fallen from the 70s now. Some 50s starting to show up as you work your way over towards the lake shore. Here's visible cloud track though showing you that cloud cover that's all moving in from the south and west. Look for skies to remain mostly cloudy as we go through tonight. That's going to keep temperatures a bit milder. We'll only fall to about 50. We'll keep the warmer temperatures around tomorrow, but the rain chances will be on the increase before a drastic drop in temperatures. We're tracking perhaps wind chill numbers below freezing by this weekend. All right, Chris, thank you. Some Madison alders are concerned that the new $40 wheel tax proposed in the city's 2020 operating budget is just too high. But Madison Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway says without it, the city may be forced to make cuts in other places. Rose Schmidt, live off Raymond Road to explain. Rose? A memo from the city attorney's office shows 24 cities in Wisconsin have a vehicle registration fee, but Madison's would be the highest at $40. The current highest is Milton at $30, and most of the others are 20. Madison's proposal is expected to generate $8 million, money that would go to transportation services like the bus rapid transit system. Alder Mike Revere says a wheel tax is inevitable because the city doesn't have many other options, but $30 he feels would be more reasonable. Mayor Rhodes Conway says Wisconsin state law puts a number of restraints on how cities can come up with revenue, and the proposal isn't something she's taking lightly. I don't think it's an ideal solution in any way. Um, it will have an impact on households, obviously, in the city, uh, but it is the only tool that the state gives us. Without the tax, the mayor says she likely would most have to start um, laying off staff or making cuts to other departments, like closing a fire station or stopping the crossing guard program. Revere says he believes it's more likely that the city would have to scrap its five proposed new positions at Metro Transit. And the, city will, the city's finance committee will take up the wheel tax proposal tomorrow night, and then it would have to go to the Common Council for approval. But after that, it would take at least three months to go into effect. So Revere says the mayor is actually pressing the council to move quickly on this so the tax could go into effect on February 1st. All right, something we'll keep a close eye on. Rose Schmidt live on the west side. Rose, thanks. City leaders are emphasizing pedestrian safety, encouraging drivers to pay attention to those who are blind or visually impaired. Unfortunately, this uh, daily occurrence is that we are in an intersection and drivers continue to proceed through even when we've signaled using pedestrian um, audible signals or other tools. Wisconsin's white cane law states that drivers must stop at least 10 feet from someone who is using a white cane or a guide dog. Madison Mayor Rhodes Conway claimed, proclaimed October 15th as White Cane Safety Day. She says she's proud Madison has more than 100 accessible crossings throughout the city, but there are other ways we need to ensure access. She says the Metro Forward Project will help increase accessibility at bus stops and in pedestrian corridors. The Dodge County Sheriff's Office is asking for help finding 20 road signs that have been stolen. Officials say the thefts have happened in Houstisford over the past year. Barricades and warning flashers have also gone missing. In total, the estimated loss to the town is about $3,000. If you see someone removing a sign, you're asked to write down the person's license plate number and contact the Sheriff's Office. A first alert traffic note, both directions of Highway 14 will be closed under I-3990 in Janesville tonight at 7 o'clock and again on Thursday night. It will reopen at 6 a.m. tomorrow and Friday morning. Crews will be setting girders for the new northbound interstate bridge. Detours will be marked and drivers are asked to avoid the area if possible. A hard rock casino in Rockford, a step closer to reality now. The Rock River Times reports the city council voted unanimously to send a proposal to the Illinois Gaming Board in order to build it. The application review process is expected to take about nine months. Construction is expected to take between a year and a half and two years to complete. The proposed location just 19 miles from Beloit, the Ho-Chunk Nation, also waiting for approval from the Bureau of Indian Affairs to build a casino there. Next at 6, a Jefferson County dog training organization is helping families care for children with disabilities. We'll have more on the special bond that's making a big difference. And more local news ahead. More school districts in our area are letting law enforcement access a live feed from their security cameras. How Middleton is using that technology. That's tonight on News 3 Now at 10.
Dozens of survivors and healthcare professionals talked to lawmakers today about critical issues related to screening and treatment for breast cancer. The Wisconsin Breast Cancer Coalition is pushing for the Wisconsin Well Women program to be expanded. The federally funded program covers the cost of cervical and breast cancer screenings for women living below the poverty line. Originally, the program was offered in every county, but it's been decreased to just 14 regions in the state which means it's helping 50% fewer women than before. Let's say a woman that is in Bayfield that needs testing has to drive to Rhinelander, which is a three-hour drive. And that makes accessibility for people very, very difficult. And when those people don't get the necessary screenings, you can't detect the cancer. Advocates are also pushing to get insurance companies to cover the cost of additional screenings for women with dense breast tissue who are at an increased risk for breast cancer. Beyond being man's best friend, dogs can be trained to help their companions with disabilities, including everything from visual impairment to seizures. A unique Wisconsin nonprofit is getting up on its feet, training dogs to help with a specific condition. Madeline O'Neill back from Jefferson County now to explain. Maddie. Eric and Susan, Dogs and Vests out of Palmyra, is currently training two dogs. One in how to detect high and low blood sugar, the other in helping comfort a person having a seizure. But the dog's main purpose is to help with a condition that affects about one in 60 children. Buddy, let's go. Buddy can be friends with anyone. Come on, stretch it out. But his bond with 12-year-old Maya will be special. His ears are soft. They were playing and running, and Maya's just... She's in love. <laughs> Who doesn't love a puppy? <laughs> yeah. Maya suffers from medical issues, including seizures. When you know she's not feeling well, you're, you're, you're scared. Her autism adds another layer. It's hard on all of us. Good boy. That's a good boy, buddy. We find that the dogs really uh, bring out their personalities. Paul Holt is the executive director of Dogs Invests. This is Ace. The only service dog provider in southeastern Wisconsin that specializes in service dogs for children and young adults with autism. He's going to a young man up in Appleton. Holt says the dogs, free of charge, can be a perfect fit, providing safety in public places. There he goes. And while making lasting friends can be hard for some with autism, it takes no words to build a relationship with these guys. Children with autism can create a, a special bond that's nonverbal, and many of them are nonverbal. Just a great companion dog at all times. They're always right there by your side. Volunteer puppy raiser Bob Washburn is training Buddy in Madison to get him ready to be Maya's new sidekick. How can you... Uh not want to be a part of this kind of thing. Maya's just a cuddler and a lover, so this will just be very, very nice. Her parents hope Buddy will make her feel more comfortable outside her home. It does give us some peace of mind that um, that maybe Maya's going to have a little more, a little more freedom, you know, a little more independence. Maya is looking forward to a friendly companion. Buddy is going to be a good dog. It'll be so nice to know that she's got this friend and this buddy, this companion. Buddy still has about a year and a half of training before he can live with Maya. The group's first dog, Ace, has about six more months of training. But in the meantime, the dogs can visit their future companions. Now, Dogs Invest's goal is to get three dogs in training by the end of the year, and they hope to expand from there. Now they're looking for volunteers, puppy raisers to help. We'll have more information on our website. It's amazing can I how volunteer? they train them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I you can. Get, I can get my lab to stay out of the trash, and they're training them to do that You stuff. might need to have them training. Yeah, I, I would not be a good trainer, Fred. Maddie, thank you. Thanks, Great Maddie. story. Next at 6, rain and thunderstorm chances. Return to the forecast tomorrow. Chris will tell us how long it's expected to stick around. Coming up next in the First Alert Forecast.
Well, temperatures made it into the low 70s or highs today for a lot of folks here in southern Wisconsin. Madison made it to 70. Let's head up to La Crosse. That's where they made it towards 74. Black River Falls topped out at 73 degrees today. And these temperatures are above where we normally are for this time of the year. Our normal high 62, the normal low 41. But these warm temperatures and all of the sunshine is doing something good for the beauty of the area. If you are a fan of fall color, see the oranges and yellows, those happen naturally with the lower sun angle. But to get the red and purples and to really get that orange and yellow to pop and shine, what you need are those crisp, cool nights and the dry, mild days. You do not want to frost and that's what the weather has been. But changes are brewing. Perhaps there is a frost threat, and I do think we're going to see more of a wet weather pattern coming our way. In the meantime, colors are definitely in peak throughout the northern part of the state, starting to approach the almost peak uh, as you work your way through central Wisconsin and then down towards the south. We're only just now truly starting to see some of that fall color. We're staying mild out there in the meantime. Temperatures still in the 60s for a lot of folks. Madison at 66 right now, but cloud cover is on the increase ahead of what will likely be the next rainmaker moving into southern Wisconsin. In fact, you already see some showers and thunderstorms brewing throughout parts of Iowa. All of that is going to be headed our direction. Our weather lately, it's been driven by high pressure that's now sliding over towards the east just a little bit. This has kept that warm southerly flow in play. Pay attention to what's going on in the north and west. There is a cold front, snows flying through the northern Rockies, and there is some truly cold air coming in on the back side of that. So look for this area of low pressure to gain some strength as we go through the coming days. But as it does so, not only is it bringing a pretty powerful snowstorm to the Dakotas, it is going to be opening the door for that cold air to work its way on into the upper Midwest. And not only will it be cold, it will be breezy as well. That's something we're going to have to talk about. A wind chill coming up in just a moment. But here's that colder air moving on in. That'll likely take hold over the upper Midwest for the weekend and really perhaps stay around throughout parts of early next week as well. It won't be until next weekend that we see some of those warmer temperatures returning. But there's the cold air. Watch temperatures as this front gradually works its way towards the south and east. This is Thursday. I think this will be our last mild day. But by by the time we get you beyond Thursday into Friday, we start things out near 60 by Friday afternoon. We're going to be a lot cooler temperatures in the 40s and then eventually the 30s. You factor in the wind as we head into the weekend by Friday night. Wind chills will be into the low 30s. We could see wind chills in the low 20s as we head into your Saturday morning. So grab a jacket into tomorrow. What you're going to need, though, is certainly the umbrella. You won't need the jackets till Saturday and Sunday umbrellas for Thursday night into Friday as we see those chances for showers and thunderstorms around here. That shower chance will also linger into Saturday. And I wouldn't be surprised if some areas mainly north of us see a flake of two, a flake of snow or two. The Badgers defense continues to be the best in the nation. Jim Leonard will tell us why that's happening in sports.
The Packers are usually back to work on Wednesday, but with a Monday night game coming up on their schedule, it shifts to a day later, so they'll get back to practice tomorrow. That Monday night game at Lambeau Field is going to be a big one. The Detroit Lions, like the Packers, have only one loss. They're 2-1-1, one, and one. they'll be well-rested coming off their bye week. Matt LaFleur knows the importance of Monday's game. That's absolutely critical, and we talk about the North games, and, you know, the bottom line is whoever wins this next game is going to be the leader in the North, in, in, in the division. So we know we have a, a, a team that's a, a really good football team coming in our place playing on Monday night. The fifth and final game of the Badger football team's current homestand is Saturday when Wisconsin hosts Michigan State at 2.30. The Wisconsin defense is on a historic pace with three shutouts in its first five games. The Badgers are ranked at or near the top in most every defensive statistic in the country, including first and total defense and scoring defense. Last year, the Badgers defense struggled at times, but this year, Jim Leonard's crew has been spot on. The energy, you know, guys, guys are flying around. They're feeding off of each other. and. Just a high play speed and physicality. I think last year there was times we just lacked that physicality. I think there was more guys at times trying to be right and not doing it the right way. And uh, right now guys are just letting it loose and playing off of each other, and whether it's the linebackers or DBs, and, and we're making a lot of impact in, in, in making plays in the backfield that we didn't do last year. The seventh-ranked Wisconsin Badger volleyball team has just begun its match at Northwestern tonight. The Badgers are 4-0 in the Big Ten, while the Wildcats are 0-4. The Prep Mania High School football game of the week, 5-2 Middleton at Sun Prairie, also 5-2, will be live on Channel3000.com Friday night at 7 from Ashley Field in Sun Prairie. The Milwaukee Bucks play their first game at Fiserv Forum this season tonight. They will play the Utah Jazz in a preseason game at 7. The Bucks roster features a couple of veteran additions like Wesley Matthews, Kyle Korver, and Robin Lopez. MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo says you can't beat experience like that. They make it easy for themselves because they know the game, they know how to play the game. Uh, they've been around the league for a lot of years. Uh, they have the playoff experience, um, championship level experience. So it's really easy and it's always fun to have guys like Kyle Cover. Like um, first practice, he was the one talking to me. You know, and uh, it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice to have guys that can breathe out better than leadership and be vocal. And the Bucks rolled out this snappy uniform announcement video today. It's the Nike Statement Edition Fear the Deer uniform with those cool rainbows on them. They're going to wear them on opening night of the regular season against Houston and 16 other times during the NBA season. Those stripes, you can see the uniform here, they're called the Cream City Rainbow. They say it's the first time the uniform numbers are the color Cream City Cream. And of course, you can buy your own starting October 20th. So either the style changes or the player gets traded, so you got to buy new stuff. <laughs> That's what it's all about, just buying jerseys. The kids want them. ka -ching. Final check of the forecast, Chris. I know. It couldn't even come out earlier. My mouth didn't want to say it, but it could be cold enough on Saturday that a few flakes of snow mix in with the rain. We have a few days until that happens. In the meantime, we're staying mild, but the rain chances are on the increase. All right. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night, everybody. See you back here at 10.